No one paid attention to this dirty dancing scene. Today we look at the overlooked and somewhat grimy dance scene in the movie Dirty Dancing that has become legendary over the past three decades. This dance romance picture, which was released on August 21, 1987, has managed to retain its status as one of the most cherished films in history. It's quite astounding to think that even the actors themselves couldn't have foreseen the immense cultural impact it would have. Join us as we delve into the nasty behind-the-scenes details of Dirty Dancing. From start to finish, Dirty Dancing offers moviegoers a heartwarming experience that is incredibly hard to replicate. However, behind the scenes, things were quite different. Even if you consider yourself a devoted Dirty Dancing fan, there are probably some behind-the-scenes tidbits you've never heard before. One of the most surprising revelations is that Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey weren't the original choices for the lead roles. Imagine Dirty Dancing without these two iconic actors. Believe it or not, initially Val Kilmer was supposed to play the role of Johnny Castle and Sarah Jessica Parker and Sharon Stone auditioned for the role of Baby. It's safe to say that the casting changes worked out for the best. And speaking of surprises, some of your favorite scenes in the movie weren't even planned. Take, for example, the memorable Mambo rehearsal scene where Baby can't stop laughing and Johnny looks annoyed. That genuine laughter from Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze's irritation with his co-star were not part of the script. Similarly, the impromptu dance floor scene set to Love is Strange was entirely unscripted. The two actors had no idea the cameras were rolling and were simply getting into character. Now, if you've ever watched Dirty Dancing and felt a nostalgic pang that transported you back to your carefree summer days, here's a surprising twist. It wasn't summer when they filmed it. The movie was shot in Virginia and North Carolina during a chilly fall, and they had to resort to spray painting the leaves green to create the illusion of summer. This means that iconic lift scene in the pool was likely quite uncomfortable for the actors, given the cold water. So, as you revisit this classic film, remember that what you see on screen is often the result of unexpected moments, casting changes, and creative solutions to less-than-ideal filming conditions. Dirty Dancing may be a timeless romance, but its behind-the-scenes story is just as fascinating. As a result of the chilly filming conditions, close-ups of the performers were omitted during certain scenes, particularly those in the water. If they had shown close-ups, you might have noticed their blue lips, which would have given away the less-than-summary weather. Another interesting tidbit is that Patrick Swayze was battling a knee injury during the filming of Dirty Dancing. In his memoir, The Time of My Life, Swayze described an injury he sustained on Broadway that affected his ability to dance in the film. Swayze had a reputation for turning down roles due to his knee injury, which was severe enough to end his career. However, given his background as a dancer-turned-actor, he often found it hard to resist dance-centric projects. Even in Dirty Dancing, he had to grapple with discomfort, especially during the iconic lake lift scene. Despite a serious pain attack, he managed to push through, a testament to his dedication to the film. After the movie's success, Jennifer Grey underwent a procedure that had a significant impact on her career. Rising to fame in the late 80s and early 90s due to Dirty Dancing, Grey decided to have rhinoplasty surgery in the early 1990s. Unfortunately, this choice led to complications that necessitated a second corrective surgery. The changes to her appearance were so drastic that she contemplated starting over with a new identity. While she ultimately decided against it, the surgeries did alter her acting career trajectory. When you watch Dirty Dancing, you might not realize that the actors were actually older than the characters they portrayed. It's common to see young adults playing teenagers in films, and in this case, the age difference between the actors and their characters might not have raised any eyebrows. Baby, played by Jennifer Grey, was supposed to be fresh out of high school at 18, but Grey herself was 26 at the time of filming. Similarly, Patrick Swayze, who portrayed Johnny, was 34, making him a decade older than his character. 
Despite this age difference, their performances were so convincing that it didn't detract from the film's charm. Interestingly, Dirty Dancing almost had a completely different title. The movie had a provocative title when it was first released in the late 1980s. The controversial title raised concerns among censorship inspectors who suspected it might be a pornographic film. Fortunately, the studio stood its ground and Dirty Dancing retained its title. Patrick Swayze, however, didn't share the same enthusiasm for the title. He once expressed his dislike for it, saying, I despise the label Dirty Dancing. It irritates me to no end. We all battled hard to avoid calling it Dirty Dancing, but that's what the studio chose, so that's what we'll have to stick with and mark it. It's a testament to the film's enduring popularity that its title, despite initial reservations, has become synonymous with its timeless appeal. The conclusion of Dirty Dancing almost had a completely different outcome, one that we might find hard to imagine today. In the realm of iconic movie lines, nobody puts baby in a corner ranks high on the list. It's a phrase that has become ingrained in popular culture and picturing a world without it is quite a challenge. Surprisingly, Patrick Swayze, who portrayed Johnny, actually disliked this famous line, and there was serious consideration given to removing it from the film. Swayze found the phrase to be overly cheesy and in his memoir, The Time of My Life, he revealed his reservations saying, we did a lot of rewriting for the big final scene, but one line that I hated stayed in. I couldn't bring myself to say, nobody ever puts baby in a corner. It sounded ridiculous to me. However, after witnessing the final product and its impact, he had to acknowledge that it worked brilliantly. Thus, the line that he initially disliked became one of the film's most memorable and cherished moments. The remarkable aspect of Dirty Dancing goes beyond just its famous lines. The entire film came together in a remarkably short span of time and on a modest budget. In a whirlwind production, the film was completed in just a little over three months, including a mere two weeks for rehearsals. The intricate dance routines that have become synonymous with the film were mastered by the performers in a mere two weeks. The filming process itself spanned 44 days, and one can only imagine the hectic schedules the actors had to juggle during this time. One particular scene that stands out is the climactic dancing sequence, which was captured in a single, awe-inspiring take. Jennifer Grey, like her character Baby, had a fear of the famous lift, and she refused to practice it beforehand. This hesitation, mirroring her character's own reluctance in the movie, added an extra layer of authenticity to the scene. When the moment arrived to film the lift against the odds, they nailed it flawlessly in a single take. This dedication and teamwork are what make Dirty Dancing a timeless classic that continues to captivate audiences to this day. The initial expectations for Dirty Dancing were far from the soaring success it eventually became. When the film was completed on October 27, 1986, there was a prevailing sentiment among Vestron officials that it would fail. Test screenings revealed that a significant 39% of viewers were unaware of a subplot involving Penny, played by Cynthia Rhodes, and her aborted pregnancy. Such concerns led distributors to contemplate the possibility of releasing the film directly to home video. However, the story of Dirty Dancing took a surprising turn. After its debut on October 21, 1987, it received an enthusiastic reception and quickly gained popularity. The film went on to gross an impressive $64 million in the United States and an astounding $170 million internationally. It even received an Oscar for Best Original Song, I've Had the Time of My Life, a year after its initial release, further solidifying its place in cinematic history. In addition, Dirty Dancing set a record for being the most popular home video rental of the year, underlining its enduring appeal. The casting process for the film had its own unique twist. Cynthia Rhodes was the first person cast in the film, securing the role of Penny before any other actors were selected. 
At that time, Rhodes had already been making a name for herself in the entertainment industry, with appearances in films like Flashdance and Staying Alive alongside John Travolta. Dirty Dancing was the project that catapulted her career to new heights. Interestingly, the primary concern of the director and producers with Rhodes was her physical attractiveness. They found that her acting skills didn't quite match the part where Penny was meant to be in severe agony, as she still appeared too beautiful for the role. To address this, stylists had to apply cosmetics to make her seem less glamorous and more like someone going through a difficult time. Rhodes ultimately wrapped up her acting career on a high note by becoming the lead vocalist of the Los Angeles pop group Animotion, a role she held until 1990. What makes Dirty Dancing particularly special is that it was largely based on the real-life experiences of screenwriter Eleanor Bergstein. Bergstein's own upbringing in the 1960s served as the inspiration for the film. Her father was a doctor and her family originally hailed from Brooklyn. Just like the character Baby, she spent every summer in the Catskills, where she engaged in various adventures and pranks, mirroring the antics of Baby and her sister depicted in the film. Interestingly, Bergstein acquired the nickname Baby during these Catskills vacations, which continued well into her thirties. The film's iconic dance sequences also had a personal touch of inspiration, Bergstein had a memorable encounter with a dancing teacher who was considerably older than her. This encounter served as the spark that ignited the creative flame, leading to the development of the dance segments that would later become the heart and soul of dirty dancing. Controversy, especially when it results in a fantastic film, always adds an intriguing layer to the world of cinema. Interestingly, Dirty Dancing wasn't the first movie that brought together the dynamic duo of Swayze and Grey. The first film in which these two actors shared the screen was Red Dawn, which hit theatres in 1984. However, it is said that it was during the filming of Red Dawn that the seeds of their relationship's troubles were sown. Some rumours suggest that this could be the reason why the producers of Dirty Dancing were initially hesitant to pair Swayze and Grey once again. Despite any lingering disagreements or differences, these two talented actors managed to set aside their personal issues, at least long enough to create a cinematic masterpiece that would go on to become a legendary and culturally significant film. In later years, Jennifer Grey reflected on their working relationship in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. She described their partnership as a mix of fearlessness and fearfulness, akin to a marriage between two opposites. Patrick Swayze's willingness to dive into any challenge contrasted with Grey's hesitance to take such risks. It's an interesting dynamic that contributed to the chemistry between their characters on screen. In essence, the behind-the-scenes tension and unique blend of personalities brought depth and authenticity to the characters they portrayed. And while they may have had their moments of friction, the end result, as seen in Dirty Dancing, was nothing short of cinematic magic. So, if you'll pardon us for a moment, we'll take a brief pause to appreciate the intriguing dynamics that shaped this iconic film. It might come as a bit of a surprise, but Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey didn't exactly have the smoothest relationship on the set of Dirty Dancing. Despite their undeniable on-screen chemistry, which showcased their superb acting skills, there were moments of discord behind the scenes. It's been rumoured that they had their share of arguments even before the cameras started rolling. As Patrick Swayze recounted in his memoirs, there were indeed moments of friction especially when exhaustion set in after long days of shooting. He recalled, We did have a few moments of friction when we were tired after a long day of shooting. She seemed to be unusually passionate at times, sometimes falling into tears when someone reprimanded her, and other times getting into funny moods, causing us to repeat sequences when she'd start giggling. Despite these occasional challenges, the magic they created on screen was undeniably captivating, and they became forever associated with their iconic characters, Johnny and Baby. Swayze believed that the film's enduring appeal lay in its heart. 
During an interview with AFI, he shared his perspective on why Dirty Dancing had resonated with audiences for so long. He said, It has so much heart to me. It's not about sensuality. It's about individuals trying to discover themselves. Like this young dancing teacher who feels like he's nothing more than a product, and this little girl who's trying to figure out who she is in a culture that limits her when she has such a wonderful perspective. In some way, it's all about the gorgeous, quirky little Jewish girl getting the man because of what she has in her heart. The sincerity and depth of the characters and their journey struck a chord with viewers and continue to do so. Interestingly, there was some hesitation about the film's potential success with younger audiences. Clearasil, a well-known acne skin care company, initially showed interest in sponsoring the film as a promotional partner. However, they ultimately declined to participate. This decision was influenced by Penny's plotline in the movie, which revolved around abortion. During the 1960s, when the film is set, abortion was legal in the United States. Clara still decided to back out due to the sensitive nature of Penny's storyline. Producers even pleaded with screenwriter Eleanor Bergstein to remove this plotline, but she adamantly refused, explaining, I'd love to, but I can't because if I take it out, everything will fall apart. There's no need for Baby to meet Johnny, for Penny to become unable to dance, for Baby to learn to dance with Johnny, and for her to have sexual relations with Johnny. There's no plot without that. Bergstein's commitment to telling an authentic and complete story prevailed, even in the face of potential controversy. After the resounding success of the first film, it's no surprise that studios were eager to capitalize on the popularity with a sequel. In the wake of the original movie's triumph, studios wasted no time in their pursuit of a follow-up. They saw dollar signs and wanted to keep the momentum going. In a bold move, they offered Patrick Swayze a hefty sum of $6 million to reprise his role as Johnny in the sequel. However, Swayze, who had a certain aversion to making sequels, stood firm and declined the lucrative offer. This decision was one that fans welcomed, as Swayze himself recognized that trying to recreate the magic of the original would be a nearly impossible feat. Despite Swayze's choice to steer clear of a sequel, Hollywood went ahead and made one anyway. This sequel, titled Dirty Dancing Havana Nights, hit the screens in 2004, a staggering 17 years after the original's release. Although it was billed as a reimagining of the original, it fell far short of capturing the same enchantment and charm that had made the first film so beloved. In terms of the production itself, filming Dirty Dancing was like a non-stop party. The objective of the extensive dance sequences was to create an authentic party atmosphere. To achieve this, director Emile Ardolino organized almost daily gatherings that were, in essence, parties. Dance rehearsals often evolved into disco celebrations, with the ensemble cast indulging in both drinks and dancing to unwind after their hard work. This strategy not only fostered a sense of camaraderie among the cast, but also established a more relaxed and jovial environment on set. It encouraged the actors to improvise and let their creativity flow while the cameras were rolling, resulting in some memorable moments on screen. So, in a way, the 24 7 party atmosphere during filming contributed to the overall liveliness and authenticity of the movie, it's a testament to the fun and spirited approach that went into the making of Dirty Dancing, which has undoubtedly played a part in its lasting appeal. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.